Good afternoon, everyone, or it could be a good evening for some of you based on when you're watching this, but we're going to do a quick training today on why menopause makes weight loss so hard. So I put out a question a couple of days ago uh, to our group and, you know, a lot of people responded. Um, there was a couple other groups that I am a part of, and a lot of them were like, yes, menopause causes problems when it comes to them trying to lose weight. You know, they either gain weight during menopause or they just can't seem to lose the weight even though they're trying they're trying to exercise they think they're eating the right foods but today we're going to kind of go over what kind of triggers this as well as um, some possible solutions you know the big thing is there's several factors that play a role in weight gain during menopause you know there's there's no black and white type of scenario in regards to hey just do these eight things for some people you just do those eight things you're going to lose weight other people, you may still have to make some adjustments. You may have to tweak it a little to get to figure out what is going to get the hormones doing what they need to be doing so that you can actually burn that fat. So, you know, some of those factors, like we just mentioned hormones, right? Hormones fluctuate. And if you have elevated or it could be too low of estrogen, this can lead to fat storage. So again, some people have high or elevated um, estrogen levels, some have really low estrogen. Both can cause problems when it comes to um, trying to lose weight, you know, because you're going to promote more fat storage. Muscle mass loss is another big one. So this can occur because of age, hormonal changes again, and decreased physical activity. As we age, you know, depending on when menopause hits, um, for many, you know, lack of activity, lack of physical activity um, causes a problem. So like strength training, is going to cause a problem. Oh, and I forgot to uh, turn my phone off here. So let me put this on uh, vibrate in case someone actually calls. So, you know, I could talk about, you know, strength training is gonna be a big one. Um, keeping that muscle mass and learning to um, decrease. Cause it, you know, strength training is not just always about muscle mass. It actually helps with bone density. So as we age, especially as you hit menopause, some people start to have bone density issues. So again, trying to keep that bone density up is going to be good for long term, but that muscle mass is going to help keep your metabolism working faster, burning more calories. Another big one is lack of sleep. So many women have trouble, you know, getting a good night's sleep. And this could be for many reasons, right? Some of it could be, um, you know, temperature changes, body temp, uncomfortable, you know, things like that. Sometimes it's just, you know, we get a poor night's sleep. So uh, we need to work on finding ways to get a more quality sleep because research has shown that when you are low on sleep, you are going to um, be more likely to gain weight. So, you know, there's been a good number of studies done now that show how important sleep is in regards to regulating our hormones so that we can actually lose weight with that. So, you know, sleep's a big one. Um, increased insulin resistance. So this is one, again, as we age, you know, women can become more insulin resistant. Part of this is because, again, it could be the physical activity or lack of physical activity. Um, it could be hormonal changes, um, but it does make it more difficult to lose weight. So, you know, we really wanna work on making sure we're eating the right foods as well as the exercise so that we can keep our insulin, what we call sensitive and working properly. Um, you know, not to make things worse, but as we age, especially with uh, women going through menopause, your fat is going, fat storage is going to shift from your hips and thighs more towards your abdomen. So, you know, for those that maybe say, oh yeah, I carry most of my weight in my hips and thighs, you're going to find that um, that fat storage now kind of moves to the abdomen. This actually increases your risk of metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, and heart disease. So as we get older, those risk factors increase. So again, it's even more important to try to get a handle on this. So at this point, you're probably thinking, you know, what's the solution? Is there a solution? Am I just doomed? You know, what are we going to do? And you know, I mentioned earlier that, you know, losing weight is just not as simple as black and white. You know, it's not always do this and this is going to be guaranteed to happen. 
because it doesn't always work out that way. Many times it actually does. But in a situation like this, while you're going through menopause, you're going to find that it may be a little more challenging because, again, we're dealing with hormones and those can cause problems. So, you know, there, there are things we can do, and I'm going to go over them here, you know, some different types of diet plans, but also in regards to um, just some diet tips and things like that. But being in a calorie deficit is very important. A number of calories that you burn, so we call that um, caloric expenditure, right? But calories burned during rest declines during menopause. So essentially your metabolism slows down. And while we need a calorie deficit to be able to lose that weight, we also want to make sure that we don't go too low um, because very low calorie diets or what they call, you know, VLCDs can actually have the opposite effect and it actually force your metabolism to slow down and um, reduce that muscle mass. Your body will start using the muscle uh, for energy, which means now you're losing muscle mass. Again, all these start to compound and makes it harder to lose weight uh, when you're going through this cycle. So, you know, it does take some planning. It does take monitoring of what you're actually eating, but the key is make sure we're in a calorie deficit but not go too low. So that's where like me as a registered dietitian would come in and help plan out your calorie needs based off of your current lifestyle, your current activity, so that make sure we're in a deficit, but we're not going too low on calories with that and triggering what they call starvation dieting. And that again, causes your metabolism to slow down and causes you to lose muscle mass. So here's some plans. We're going to go over a couple of diet plans here that have been shown to help with weight loss during and beyond menopause. First one is a low carb diet. Many studies have shown that uh, low carb diets are excellent for weight loss. And you know your carb intake doesn't have to be extremely low to produce that weight loss, but most of us are carb heavy when it comes to eating. So you know we may think, oh, it's a very low carb diet, but really it's probably not that bad in, in the grand scheme of things from a dietitian standpoint because it's just much lower than what you're used to eating. So so your first one is the low-carb diet. Second one is Mediterranean diet. And most people think of this diet as for like improving heart health and reducing heart disease and things like that. But studies have also shown it actually may help you lose weight. So this is a good diet to follow. Um, it's been around for a lot of years. It's balanced and so forth. So third one would be like a paleo diet, you know, where roughly maybe 30% of your diet comes from the carbs. And again, studies have shown that this can produce significant weight loss and reduction in abdominal fat. So those are like three, like what people would call more mainstream diet plans, you know, that you might be familiar with. Some other diet tips that actually work and should be incorporated into all three plans that we just talked about is eating plenty of protein. So protein helps keep you full. It helps keep you, you know, satisfied, not looking for more food, and it can actually increase your metabolic rate. Eating foods high in soluble fiber is another good tip because this actually helps increase insulin sensitivity, reduce your appetite, and promote weight loss. A third tip would be drink green tea. So a good number of studies have shown that the uh, compound, if I can pronounce it right, epigallocatechin, epi, epi, epi I believe is how you pronounce it, gallate, may help you actually burn more fat. So drinking green tea might, you know, that compound in green tea, um, which again, they shorten usually to be ECGC, um, will actually help you um, potentially burn more fat. So final tip would be just practice mindful eating. You know, if we can reduce our stress levels, which means we'll reduce our cortisol levels. And this now leads to eating less food because high cortisol or too high of cortisol promotes not only fat storage, but it promotes our appetite to go up. So again, we want to reduce that stress level. We want to reduce the cortisol levels. So, you know, kind of mindful eating is knowing what are we going to be eating instead of just kind of always eating on the run. What are we doing to uh, make sure we're kind of stick to a plan as much as possible? So, you know, again, menopause, obviously I'm a man, I'm not a woman. Um, I have never gone through it personally. I've worked with a lot of clients that have, and it's frustrating on all fronts, right? 
it's obviously frustrating for you. It's frustrating for me as a dietitian because many things that work almost like clockwork sometimes just don't work. And we have to go to a plan B and we have to kind of start testing different things. Um, and that's where my skill set comes in to help people really figure out what is it that we need to do? Because again, it's not always clear cut with this, unfortunately. But, you know, getting adequate sleep is very important with that. We just talked about stress, you know, controlling that stress so that we can control our appetite and not promote fat storage because the cortisol hormone is too high. Another big one. Uh, following sound diet strategies by making sure we're in that caloric deficit, right, um, is, a, is a big one. So, and then finally, really watching our carb intake. We want it low, but we don't want it too low. Um, and, you know, most of us overeat on carbs. So uh, getting down to say 20, 30% carbs for 35% carbs um, for most people is going to be very significant. And we're going to see a big change in uh, your uh, body type and so forth with that. So hope this helps. Um, like I said, it can be frustrating. It's not always cut and dry uh, when it comes to menopause. But, you know, if we follow these types of strategies and again, maybe have to tweak a few things along the way, you should be able to lose weight during menopause and, um, you know, reach those body weight goals that you've always wanted to reach. But if you need a more personalized program, you know, answer questions, need some help in figuring out how many calories should I be eating? Because again, you don't want to go too low. Uh, you can reach out to me and we can discuss what changes need to be made with your meal planning so that you can lose weight during menopause.